TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. Mayday, mayday, mayday. The words no one wants to hear from a cockpit came as an Ohio jogger heard a strange noise above him Sunday and saw from below what others saw and recorded out their windows. There was extreme rumbling, vibrations, noise was deafening. There was a lot of hold, you know, hand holding, you know, a lot of people closing their eyes and trying to text their loved ones and so forth like that. So it was scary. The engine's on fire. Three days earlier, passengers on American Airlines Flight 2288, waiting to take off from Charlotte to Dallas-Fort Worth, saw something similar. The pilots will get on and let us know what's going on. The FAA is investigating a possible engine fire for that flight. Sunday's pilots quickly identified what they believed to be the mid-air problem. We had a bird strike and an engine failure. The FAA says there were more than 17,000 wildlife strikes with airplanes in 2022, with more happening every year. This collision happened on a Delta flight earlier this month. From last year to this year, they're up a, a third, so it's really quite dramatic. And the trending up of the statistics actually tracks with the trending up of the bird populations. Airports are working to scare birds away with flares and noises, relocating them and building runways away from wetlands. It's an attempt to keep nature in check and get passengers safely to their destinations. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. My name is Judy B. Jones. Before this school year, eight-year-old Dream James was struggling to read. Now, she's reading everything. I just like B and that's all. Before it was, I can't do it, I can't spell, I can't read too. Now it's, oh, I know how to sound this out and I know how to read this. The third grader at Panther Valley Elementary School in rural Pennsylvania had a hard time learning the basics of reading. Her school had introduced a new curriculum a few years ago based on the balanced literacy theory an approach used in some classrooms nationwide for over two decades. Rather than learning to sound out letter combinations, also called phonics, teachers focused on what's known as cueing, instructing children to use context and other clues to figure out words. This just explains to them what each syllable actually means. Teacher Amanda Cusco at first embraced this new approach. But then as we started kind of digging deeper and and getting into the instruction, you know, we sort of noticed something was missing. So how did it work? As they're reading, they are supposed to look at the picture. Oh, what's this word? Well, look at the picture. Do you maybe know a word part? What could that word be? What word would make sense there? So they weren't actually reading the letters. They weren't reading the words. They were guessing. That didn't work. We realized very quickly that students weren't acquiring the skills to actually sound out words, to code words, spell words. They weren't actually learning to read. By year end, just a quarter of Panther Valley's third graders could read at grade level. In fact, much of the country is facing a child literacy crisis. Just one in three fourth graders was at or above proficiency in reading last year, with nearly four in ten performing below basic level. It's a social issue um, for all of us, and it's an equity issue across America. But a shift is underway. Education Week reports over the last decade, at least 29 states in the District of Columbia have begun to require an evidence-based approach to reading instruction. Mississippi started back in 2013 when they enacted legislation and policies around requiring teacher prep programs to base their training on the science of reading. From 2013, fast forward to 2019, they have 10 points gain. At Panther Valley Elementary, Principal Robert Palazzo also changed course, replacing balanced literacy after trying it for just a year and a half. Oh. Good job, cold. Cold. Syllable. We've seen students in third grade's decoding skills, meaning sounding out words, um, increased from 20% um, at grade level in the beginning of the year 
to approximately 60% currently. Dream began the year reading at a first grade level and is now closer to a middle or end of second grade level. She and her mother couldn't be more proud. Now this is what she wants. This is what she likes. She loves to read. She's eager to like, oh, I can't wait to start fourth grade. I can't wait to, you know, to do all this because she's not low self-esteem no more. Follow The Advocate Channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. The Banana Boat song opening line, Deo, put Harlem-born Harry Belafonte on the map. The son of Caribbean immigrants worked hard to pull himself out of poverty through music and education. I and my brothers and sisters were the first to be educated. Belafonte's humble and sometimes rough beginnings in New York City helped shape the man who later would have a major impact on American music and drama. I went to school here, drama school. My classmates were Marlon Brando, Sidney Poitier, Walter Matthau, B. Arthur. Belafonte burst onto the entertainment scene in the early 1950s. He was dubbed the King of Calypso because of the Jamaican folk music he made popular. Cut that out. At around the same time, he won rave reviews for his role in the movie Carmen Jones. It was one of the first films with an all-black cast to garner box office success. The man with the uniquely husky voice went on to make more than 40 albums, including original recordings and compilations, and starred in more than 10 movies spanning more than five decades. Belafonte won several Grammy Awards for his records in the early 1960s and was one of the first black performers to win a Tony Award for the Broadway hit John Murray Anderson's Almanac. In his later years, his big screen projects dealt with the larger societal issues of race and class, like 1995's White Man Burden. Kind of just grew up and got away from me, you know. Although Belafonte's career kept him busy, he always made time for his family. He was the father of four children from two marriages. His daughter, Sherry Belafonte, followed in his footsteps to become an actress in her own right. Although his music and movies gained him fame, Belafonte also made his mark as a political activist. In the 60s, he stood up for the civil rights of blacks in America and stood side by side with the likes of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy, both later assassinated. Two decades later, he turned his attention to the poor and powerless abroad, especially in Africa. In 1985, Belafonte initiated the U.S. for Africa recording of We Are the World with some of the world's most famous entertainers. The song raised over $63 million for African relief. And for his humanitarianism, the artist received numerous awards from the Kennedy Center, the ACLU, the American National Medal of the Arts, and the Thurgood Marshall Lifetime Achievement Award. Mr. Harry Belafonte. Later in life, Belafonte further sealed his legacy, starting his own foundation, Sankofa, focused on social justice. In the documentary, Harry Belafonte, Sing Your Song, he contemplated his life of accomplishment and the work that lay ahead. I try to envision playing out the rest of my life almost exclusively devoted to reflection. But uh, is this too much of the world to be done? My social activism, things that I believed in politically, and although I took a lot of heat for what I did then, I'm taking heat again for some of the things I say and do, but if history is any, is any measure, then I probably wind up on the right side of the equation. Thanks for watching The Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.